where you've been, what you've done, and what you have done to you. You are the part of the journey that God knew you were going to be on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there we go. How are you doing today, God's house? How many of you guys are excited for 2019? How many of you guys are already tired of 2019? Good, good. You better not be. We're only two weeks deep into this thing. And, uh, and hey, look, for the most of you, 2019, I don't know how it started for you, but I can guarantee you that most of you probably don't feel like I feel this morning because we're in the middle of a liquid fast. and That's part of our 21-day corporate fast that we do every year. And, you know, we did a liquid fast in November, and, uh, and that was amazing. I mean, I literally, for three days, I did not think about food. I didn't think about anything. I, I was just so hopped up on God. I was good. We had uh, devotionals going on on our Facebook group page, and, and there, was, there were all kind of things that leaders were doing, and you were just so excited. And then we hit this one, and I was like, oh, it's going to be like last time. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. It's going to be nothing. I'm telling you, at, at 12.35 a.m., of the first day, I'm in my bed and my stomach starts growling and it has not stopped growling since that day. I am looking at my kids. My kids are eating McDonald's. I want to die. They're asking, what, what can we eat for dinner? Can we have bacon? I'm like, are you kidding me? Bacon? You want to eat bacon right now? Foods I never eat, I want to eat right now. I mean, I want to eat pickles. I want to eat all kind of stuff that I would never in my life dream of eating. But right now, standing in front of you, my stomach is growling, and I just want to eat malasadas. I want to eat manapuas. I want to eat kalua pork. I want to eat lao lao. I want to eat everything I can get my hands on. You could bring me right now pieces of, like, blades of grass, and I will eat it. So I don't know what you're going through right now in 2019, but I'm right there with you. <laughs> no, I, I love fast. Stacy was looking at me just this morning. Actually, every day of the fast, she said it to me at least one time. She said, I don't, I don't feel sorry for you, Chris. You're the pastor. <laughs> you're the one who set it up. I was like, well, you know, I complain and I want to eat everything. But the truth is, that's why we fast. <laughs> if it was easy, you know, it's not really a fast. But why do we fast? I shared on our group Facebook page. Why do we fast? And it has to do with this word that I spoke last week in our first Sunday of the year where I gave a word for the year for God's house in 2019. And that word was, that word was, God is looking for a lean-in kind of people this year. We got all kind of people that come to church. We got all kind of people that are part of his movement. And today we are starting a year-long series for the entire year of 2019 where we're not going to move from series to series like we usually do within six to eight weeks. But we are going to be doing one long series starting today where we go from the front of the book of Acts to the end of the book of Acts. And that series is called The Movement. And I believe that God wants to start a movement. I think in 2,000 years of church, we have deviated from God's original intention for his people. And the thing about God is God doesn't need a process of perfection. God is God. He is perfect in all of his ways. He has no need for improvement, which means the first thing he creates is the best thing he creates. But there is something inside of us as people that we just can't settle for God being perfect in all his ways and everything he tells us to do. We are always constantly trying to improve and change the things that God sets and ordains in our lives. God will speak a word to you. 
and he'll tell you, this is what I want you to do. And I have found that the things of God are always simple, but they're never easy. But the problem is we don't care as human beings about, e- about simple. We want it easy. So God speaks a simple word to us. I want you to turn down Sunday morning shifts from now on. I want you to give me the first fruits of your week. Now, I know this is not the word for everybody. I'm not here saying that if you work on Sunday, something's wrong. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is God will speak that to you because you don't know how to put God first. As Cherie said, in this church, we don't teach that tithe and offering, that tithe, first fruits, is a money thing. It is actually a heart thing. But your money will go where your heart is. Jesus says where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So your heart will follow the money. So if you say, God, you're first in my life, but you hoard your money, then maybe he's not first in your life. But that goes to time, that goes to energy, that goes to resource. And in America, 2,000 years after Jesus, we've created our own form of Christianity. In fact, there's a term for it. It's called American Christianity. We created our own terminology around our version of what it means to follow Jesus that if you look in the Bible, isn't much like following Jesus at all. So what we are going to do is we're going to take an entire year and we are going to go into the book of Acts, which is a history, a telling of the very first original OG church that ever existed. And instead of treating it like a a prototype that we have since improved on, we are going to go in with the attitude that God ordained it, Jesus said it, and it is not something that needs improvement. It's what we need to return to. Amen? So I want you to open up your hearts because I'm going to tell you. Today I'm going to preach a message and we are going to start and set the table for this series, and I want to talk to you today about staying power. Everybody say staying power. Every movement starts with momentum. If you don't have momentum, you have no movement. Every time you see something move, physics teaches you that anything that goes into motion goes into motion through the power of momentum. If there is no momentum to push you or move you in a direction, you will never move in that direction. When a ball starts rolling, it didn't just decide to start rolling because it was sitting there and go, you know what, I'm going to roll and start rolling in a direction. There is a force that acts upon it that starts to push it, and when that force acts against it, it causes a momentum. All the weight shifts in a direction, and that ball starts moving, and that movement is momentum. And I asked God, why would you ask, why would you tell me, out of everything you could tell me, to use lean in as our word for the year, when everything this year is about the movement? I wanted to do something cool like our word for the year is I am the movement and just do that, right? Or, or, Let's move or something like that. But he said, lean in. And I said, why lean in? And this week during this fast, God began to speak to me about leaning in. And he said, Chris, I got a picture of an Olympic sprinter getting ready to run the gold medal final in the 100-meter dash. And there are specific directions just before you race that the announcer gives you. The first one is on your mark. And when he says on your mark, The racers, no matter what they're doing, some of them are stretching. Some of them are just standing there with their eyes closed, visualizing the race. Some of them are slowing their heartbeat. If you're Usain Bolt, you're doing your bow and arrow. Preening for the audience. But when he says, runners, on your mark, they stop whatever it is they're doing. They stop looking internally, and they find their place that they're supposed to start. And they hit that mark, they get on their knees, and as they're on their knees, they start to put their hands forward, 
right at the line. And they put themselves in position. And I feel like for four years, God has been positioning us. We have been finding our mark. And here as we enter year five of God's house, now this year God is saying, get set. And when you get set, this is what happens. The runner goes from just having his hands forward, crouching down. He shifts his weight forward. He leans in. And he puts all of his momentum. Yeah, see, they're amending. They don't even know what this, they, they're in it. I wish somebody in here right now would catch it like those kids. Just God is sitting outside the other room. But, but the runner leans in and to, in anticipation of where he's about to run. And he says, before I ever start running, before God ever gives me permission to go, I am ready, I am anticipating, and I have all my weight forward ready for you. And when you tell me to go, I will not fight you. My weight will not be backed up. I will not resist you. But everything in me is pushing forward into where you're calling me. And when you lean in like that, you position yourself for momentum. And 2,000 years ago, God ushered in through his son a movement called the kingdom. A government he calls the church. But that movement needs momentum. And that momentum, that movement, it's not four walls. It's not religious organization. It's not programs and plans or anything like that. The movement is made up of people. And we must supply the momentum. And that momentum for any kind of momentum, sustained momentum that reaches its potential, there's one thing you got to start with, you got to commit to right at the beginning, staying power. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 1. We're going to start right at the beginning. Through my years, two decades as a pastor, I have seen people come and go, come and go, come and go. But let me tell you the people who I see become forces for the kingdom. It's not the people who come and go, come and go, come and go. Anybody can come. Paul says anyone can start a race, but it's those who finish. That are useful to God. I like my amen corner out there today. That's awesome. Right on cue. Staying power. Look at your neighbor and say, staying power. Look at your neighbor again and say, you got to have staying power. I got you. You, you got to have staying power. You got to have staying power. Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 1. And then I want you to get ready to go to Psalm chapter 1. Acts 1, verse 1. I'm reading out the New Living Translation. In my first book, I told you Theophilus. This is Luke speaking. Luke was a doctor and a historian, which means he was a very detail-oriented person. You will find that Luke is, is probably the most accurate of the Gospels in its details. It is a chronological, historical account of the story of Jesus. He was a very detail-oriented person. Luke, the Gospel of Luke... And the book of Acts are two volumes of the same book. It's part one and part two. You can start in Luke, read right through Luke, skip to Acts, start in Acts, and it will seamlessly, seamlessly transition. In my first book, the, the Gospel of Luke, I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen dis, uh, apostles further instructions through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, 
he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. He appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. You know how you're going to prove to the people around you who Jesus is? It's going to happen in the way you appear to them. Some of you think that appearance is not important. But everyone around you is watching you in one way or the other. And the only way they're going to know that you're going to be able to prove the existence of Jesus Christ is the way you appear to them. I don't know who that's for. And he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom. We just got done with kingdom come. He talked to them about the kingdom. After he came back from the grave, his message didn't change. He came in preaching the kingdom. He went out preaching the kingdom. Once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem. Do not leave Jerusalem. Everybody say staying power. Until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. And John baptized with water, but in just a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? You know, from this time until now, believers always want Jesus to do something for us instead of us doing it for ourselves. Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? I want you to hear that language. Lord, when is it time for you to do our part? When are you going to come and restore our kingdom? Ain't that just like us? Ain't that, isn't that 99% of our prayer life? God, I need you to intervene in my finances. I need you to intervene. I am so tired of credit card debt. I got to get out of it. And God's like me. Get you out of credit card debt. Why don't you cut up your credit card and stop spending money you don't have? God, will you bring the right person to me? Seems like everyone I date is the wrong person. And God, I just need you to bring the one into my life. And if you bring the one into my life, it'll be all good. I win, God, when are you going to usher in my perfect relationship? And God's like, when are you going to stop going to the club every Friday night and dating every guy who buys you a drink? And Jesus replied, Oh, no worries. You just got to have faith and believe, and I'm going to usher in the kingdom in a few minutes. Now, he says, he replied, the Father alone has the authority. The Father alone. It ain't none of your business. The Father alone has the authority to set these dates and times, and they are not for you to know. In other words, mind your own business. Do what I called you to do. Don't leave Jerusalem. That's all you got to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, through Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Turn to Psalm chapter 1 real quick. Starting at verse 1. It says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. I could preach. A whole series 
on that verse. Other translations say, blessed are those. A little over a year ago, I preached a message on this exact passage. Blessed. Everybody wants to be blessed. But how many of us are still taking advice from the wrong people? Hanging out with the wrong people. And joking around with the wrong people. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. And they are like trees planted. Everyone say staying power. Trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. Wow. How many of you would love to bear fruit every time it's season in your life? You want your leaves, what you have, to never wither and you want to prosper in all you do. How many of you want that in your life? then you got to have one thing. You got to have staying power. Jesus is getting ready to go to heaven. That's where we start our story. And heaven is not a location. It wasn't like Jesus was about to get ready to get into his space shuttle sitting on the Mount of Olives. It wasn't even like he was like, hey, guys. I'm getting ready to take off in my space shuttle, and I'm going to go back to heaven. Heaven is not a location. Heaven is a realm. Specifically, heaven is everywhere the presence of God is. It is where God is. If heaven exists and God's not in it, it's not heaven. I don't know what it is. But apart from God, it's not heaven. And he says, I'm going back to heaven. But as I leave, I'm going to leave you some instruction. And my instruction is this. I am sending you somewhere, and I don't want you to move until you get the promise that I want to give you. He says, I have a destiny for you. I have a mission for you. But before you can walk out your destiny, you've got to receive the power. And you're not going to get the power running along wherever you want to run along. You're going to get it when you stay where I tell you to stay. See, we live in a generation now where church hopping is the thing to do. Everybody wants to jump from church to church to church. And you're looking for the right fit. Everybody wants to go where they want to go. Everybody wants to hear the messages they want to hear. And people don't ever listen to God and what he's telling you. We go because we like the music. We go because we like the preacher. We will leave church because one time someone was taking up offering And they dared to put a demand on me to give, and I got offended. We live in a generation where we are floaters. We want to be lily pads, not trees. I want to just be free to float along. If I feel like coming on a Sunday, I come on a Sunday. If I don't feel like coming, I just want to go to the beach, I just go to the beach. If I don't feel like coming to this place, I go to another place. I'm just going to float. I like the freedom of floating. But let me tell you something about lily pads. They get to float everywhere they want to go. But because they float everywhere, they never put down roots. And because they never put down roots, lily pads, if you've ever seen a lily pad, they're, they're, they're round, but they're not tall. They never reach any heights. Because you can't reach heights. And you can't bear fruit unless you put down roots somewhere. Somewhere. And so when Jesus is talking to his apostles, he says, I'm about to create 
something that has never been created. I'm going to create a movement out of you. But I need you to not seek to be the fruits. I need you to seek to be the roots of this movement. Everybody wants to be the fruit. Everybody wants to be shiny and nice and taste good. Everybody wants to be picked. Everybody wants to be seen. And we're like, how do I become the fruit? But I want to know right now how many of us want to be the roots. How many of us want to be the source that God speaks revelation to for his whole body? It says, I don't care. It is not my job to reach high. It is my job to dig deep. Some of you, God is calling you to dig deep right now. You've done the floating. You've done the chilling. You've done the going from place to place to place. And here you find yourself in 2019. Some of you have known Jesus for decades, but you're still the lily pad. You have never gone any higher than where you started. You keep starting and stopping, starting and stopping. And you're saying, God, how do I reach higher than I've ever reached? I want to tell you right now. You know where it starts? You know where the movement starts? You know where the church started? You know where the kingdom starts? It starts with a people who have staying power. The Bible says that Jesus appeared to approximately 500 disciples during the 40 days 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says he appeared to, over that span of 40 days, he appeared to approximately 500 disciples and believers in him. In that time, he gave them the direction to stay where you are until you receive the promise. But we read in Acts that there are approximately 120 that were left. Almost a quarter did not have staying power. And you know what the crazy thing is? The kingdom wasn't penalized because it was 120 instead of 500. Day one, Holy Spirit hits. 3,000 get saved. Two of those 120 go out. Meet a beggar. Tell them I don't have silver and gold. I'm going to preach on this in, in about a month. So I'm not going to let you in on all the secrets in that story. But they go up to this guy. And out of this encounter with two guys, 5,000 people get saved. The largest single day numerically that we know of in the Bible of recorded salvation. Two guys. It didn't matter if there were only two people left in that upper room. He doesn't need a bunch of people. He just wants to know which people have staying power and will believe him at his word and stick to it. Even when you don't want to. Even when you don't feel like it. Even when it's hard. You heard a word from God. And the promises of God are yes and amen. God is the yes. You're the amen. Because the power of actualization in this physical world comes through the power of agreement. Nothing happens in this world except through agreement. And when the Spirit of God comes in your life, He will speak things to you. And He says these things are yes, but He needs you through your life and through your obedience to be the amen. And if you're not going to agree with his word, it may never come true. Man, I'm giving you secrets to the kingdom right now. Some of us are praying for God to be the yes and the amen. You're like, God, I don't have enough faith to believe what you're saying. So I need you to be the amen because I just can't give you the amen. And God's like, I just want you to dare to believe.
And it's so funny because just like us, no sooner does Jesus say, I want you to stay in Jerusalem until my promise comes true, that the disciples are already thinking ahead. He says, stay where you are until you receive power. They're like, Jesus, when are you going to come back and when are you going to establish your kingdom? It just goes in one ear and right out the other. And so Jesus has to go, hey, you're asking the wrong questions. That's not your job to worry about. Jesus, Jesus I, know, I know you're telling me to just trust you. I know you're telling me to stay put. I don't get it. I don't understand it. Why do you want me to stay in Jerusalem? Why do you want me to stay here? I want to go reach the ends of the earth. I want to be, you talked about the kingdom. I want to do that. When are you going to come back and when are we going to do that? And Jesus is like, no. Just follow this simple instruction I'm giving you. When it's my time to do what I'm going to do, I will do it. But he's like, it ain't none of your business. Turn to your neighbor and say, it ain't none of my business. <laughs> say it like you mean it. Turn to your neighbor and say, it ain't none of my business. If you keep asking God, let me give you a 2019 start your year off right piece of advice. If you keep praying the same thing over and over again, and you keep asking God the same question, but he's not answering you, it's probably because it's not your business to know right now. <laughs> God's probably telling you through his silence, stop asking. That's the wrong question. Well, God, what do you want me to do? What, where should I go? When, when am I going to rule with you? When are all these promises you told me? When are they going to come true? What do I do? And this is what God says. Stay put. Stick to it. Keep fighting. Don't give up. Lean in. Don't lean back. Don't look around. Don't leave out. The last thing I shared last week, I told you. We read a story about the disciples when Jesus says, one of you are going to betray me. And the Bible says there were three reactions. John leaned in. Judas left out. The other ten looked around. But we left off with Judas leaving out. If you don't lean in, you will always end up leaving out. You got to lean in. See, the kingdom, take this to the bank. The kingdom is not your part-time job, it's your full-time habitation. He never gave us an option to make the kingdom our part-time job. Some of us treat our role in the kingdom like it's a part-time job. Serving in church is my part-time job. Finding my place is my part-time job. Let me tell you, the kingdom is not a part-time job. The kingdom is your full-time habitation. You don't part-time work. For the country you're a citizen of, you full-time live in it. But people who don't know how to stay put, when you don't have staying power, all the kingdom will ever be to you is a part-time job. It'll be a part-time commitment. I come when I want to come. I go when I want to go. I transport myself from place to place to place, and I, I just do whatever I want. I call him my Lord and Savior, but I'm still Lord and Savior of my life. I set the rules. I set the direction. I set the pace. And many of us never experience the promises of God because every promise of God comes to you as a seed. You say, God, I want an oak tree. God gives you a little oak seed, oak, oak, a little acorn. And you say, what is this, God? I asked for an oak tree, and all you gave me was an acorn. That's nothing. 
So we just throw it on the side. We just put it up on our mantle. Some of us throw it in the trash. And then we pray, God, why didn't you give me an oak tree? God said, I gave you an oak tree. You know what you didn't know how to do? You didn't know how to plant it in the ground, be patient, and let it do its thing. But he tells the disciples, the promise is coming. The promise is coming. The promise wants to intersect you. But if you're not in the right place at the right time, you will miss it. Some of us have missed the promise of God because we did not have the patience to stay in the meeting place that that promise was supposed to encounter us. God told you, I want you to stay at this job because all of your prayers of financial need is going to be met at that job. But you got tired of your boss. And you said, my boss don't treat me right. So you quit your job prematurely. You went on to the next thing. Now that next job isn't what you thought it was, and you've gone to three jobs since. Can't find your place. You can't go back because you lost your position. And then that promotion that was supposed to be the answer and the promise for you got given to somebody else. I'm tired of people coming here. And you have this powerful encounter with God. And then I never see you again. And then I see you a year later. And you're getting prayed for the same thing. That's not life. But see, God wants you to be a tree planted. You can't continually uproot yourself and ever hope you're going to bear fruit. You will never get to that place. That's why James 1 says, let perseverance have its perfect work in you so you'll be complete, lacking nothing. Those who persevere produce. Those who have staying power produce. Seeds don't bear fruit. Trees do. And we have to stop thinking like we're a seed planted. And you got to start thinking like you're a tree planted. God is looking for a people with staying power to be a movement. I want to start a movement here in 2019. We've already started a movement. We, we have laid the foundation, but now... It is time for us to be. And I want to know which one of you has staying power. I want to know who's got staying power. I want to know who's got the roots to stay put when the storms arise. Who know how to stay put when you're offended because God's trying to grow you. I want to know who is committed for the long haul, not the short term. I want to know who says, I give you my life, all of it right now, not just parts. I want to know who is with me to start a movement on this island. I want to know. Everybody get up on your feet. And right now, if you say, God, starting right now, today, January 13, 2019, I commit sustained power. I want you to just praise God right now. Just begin to praise God right now. Just begin to say, that's me, Lord.